Hello again, everyone. My name is Kronos006, and I'm back with more of Urban Runner. Now, I turned the music off because obviously the last time I was playing, it was way too loud over the dialogue. So, here we go. We're back in this situation where we still have to distract her, so let's try that one more time. I think I figured out what I needed to do. And it, I will demonstrate that it's kind of a frustration that I often have with some cocktail vision games. I missed the boat. I asked my accomplice to distract her again. Now, I tried to use the matchbook on the rubbish bin. I will show you again, doing the exact same thing. That gives me a nothing. I cannot do that. However, what I can do is go over here and select the matches and use them on the rubbish bin. That's kind of lame. Don't like that. And that kind of happens in a couple of Cocktail Vision games, if I recall correctly. Anyway. Oh, news! How did that happen? I didn't even see him do that. The coast is clear now. Coast is clear now to do what? I think I'm going to have to use it again. Why? I missed the boat. I asked my accomplice to distract her again. Okay. Now what did I do wrong? Oh, there we go. I've managed to ascertain from the register that room 227 was occupied by a lady and that the next room was reserved in the name of a private club. The hell? Did they forget to do that line with so the main it's a actor? Woman in room 227. Probably Marcos's lover. 225 is reserved under the name of Club Zanzibar. Zanzibar. I know that name from Marcos's odds and ends. I tried everything I could, but couldn't get any more out of the receptionist. It's too risky to show her this fake ID. I do like the music that they play here, but like I said, it's just way too loud. I can barely hear anything. Well, I'm going to turn it back on. Hopefully there won't be too many things that'll happen that'll be blocked out. Okay, maybe I just need to go back upstairs. I've got to find a way of canceling the reservation so I can have the room. Nope, I still need to cancel the reservation. <laughs> it's no good. She said that unless the client cancels, the reservation stands. Okay, so, you know what? I am going to turn it off. I, I can't even hear myself talk, so. It's no good. She said that unless the client cancels, the reservation stands. I don't know yet who to call. Who am I supposed to call anyway? It's no good. She said that unless the client cancels, the reservation stands. What am I supposed to do? I am at a loss. Guess I can look at this again, maybe? Ah, uh, okay, that's why I can't call it, because I only have half the number. Hmm. Okay, so I know that this is the other half of Zanzibar, but I don't have a number. Oh, there it is. 
There it is. That's the first half of the number. I'm an idiot. This is also kind of non-intuitive, but whatever. And now I have the entire Club, club Zanzibar. Logo. At last, I've got the whole name and the right phone number. At last. I'm not French at all. I phone Club Zanzibar to come to the hotel. Some guy named Sergio told me that room 225 was reserved for his boss, Mr. LaGrange. Paul LaGrange, the politician, of course. Boss at the Zanzibar Club. Thanks for the info. Lucky I didn't come across the closed mouth type. It's no good. She said that unless the client cancels, the reservation stands. Yeah, but now I have a name. Do I not? Oh, come on. Yes, I know. I get it. It's not <laughs> I can act. What? That would never work. I pretended to be Mr. LaGrange and canceled his reservation for room 225. That would never, ever work. Not in a million years. I finally got hold Whatever. of the key to the room next to Marcos's. At last I was going to find out who was in there. Boom. Hopefully in here I can turn the music back on. Let's check. Alright, so it's gonna be kinda loud. There's nothing I can do about it. This is better than hearing me breathe all the time. So, sorry guys. When I'm editing it, if it's impossible to understand, I'll put some subtitles up. And yes, there are no subtitles in the game, so I can't just turn them on either. Room service anytime, eh? Oh, I now there's the someone here. In the room next door. It seemed I had gotten her out of the tub. I pretended that I had the wrong number, and then I tried to check out the situation by doing a bit of smooth talking. She was pretty cagey, but I wasn't going to give up that easily. See, now that time the music quieted and you could hear. The other times it wouldn't. No, that might bug. Me. I can't beat face to face pain. Now that I heard the voice I was expecting an eventful evening, I ordered champagne for room 227 and waited for room service to come. Oh hi! The first time I saw Ada Wurtmuller, a shiver went right down my spine. She had the kind of killer smile that could put you down and out for the count. Ada Wurtmuller, a German ecological politics student fresh out of college. She really trusted University. me that quickly? Driven by her <laughs> conviction, she had Apparently she did. to infiltrate his circle and sabotage his drug trade. She clearly had no idea he was dead. And I certainly didn't feel like being the one to break the news. In any case, I sure was crazy about her, and I wasn't going to let anybody ruin this very special moment. I fell instantly in love with that woman that I sleep with one time. Oh, uh, this is priceless. Can I at least get some side boob? Please. <laughs> Very lonely. <laughs> this is going to turn into the room, isn't it? I'd come to see my buddy Freddy, a newspaper columnist. That is a loud code. My precious film. As soon as it was developed, everybody would be able to see that Tony Marcos, the trafficker, and Paul LaGrange, the politician, were in cahoots. And not everybody was going to like it. Freddy was an honest guy. He was determined to publish the photos even if it put his own family in danger. In the meantime, 
I decided to continue my inquiry at the Club Zanzibar, which, surprise, surprise, was run by LaGrange. Oh, yeah. Club Zanzibar, baby. Yeah, what is it? What's the password? I want to shoot some pool. Can I come in? No, it's members only in here. But, uh, I thought I already told you. How'd you like to earn a big tip? Okay, Slick, let's see what you got. But don't get tricky on me. You hear? I offered him everything I had in my pockets, but he just wasn't interested. I told Sergio I had some time to kill, and that I'd like to shoot some pool. He didn't seem particularly moved by my situation. I don't think Sergio likes me very much. How about a watch? That is a nice watch. He was so taken with the gold watch that he was almost friendly. After all, he wasn't against having a little company. I took advantage of his good mood to pump him for information. It sure wasn't going to be easy, though. Since I had bragged that I was a good pool player, he challenged me to make three very difficult shots. Amazing how it's pouring rain indoors. Loosening up, Sergio happened to mention there was another entrance to the club that led to a dead-end alley, and that the boss used this door with its three coated locks to slip in and out discreetly. Psst, 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 psst. No! Before the pool game was over, I'd managed to get the lowdown on LaGrange, thanks to Sergio. I went back to the hotel to be with my beautiful Ada, <laughs> completely unaware another storm was brewing. After pool negotiations, sex. Inspector Van Dale had put my description out all over town, and of course Ada had heard about it. She was an intelligent young lady, though, and I knew she wouldn't believe I <laughs> From now on, we would be bound together by our mutual trust, and we were so eager to get to the bottom of all this that we weren't going to let anybody stop us. Not Inspector Van Dale, not anybody. The acting of this is so terrible. I love it. That same night, we set out for Tony Marcos's office. I could hardly keep my eyes off Ada dressed in that number. She was the one who'd insisted we try to get her ex-boyfriend's secret documents. She was in command, and I was more than happy to take her orders. She is an attractive woman. Okay. We haven't saved in a little bit. How about we do that? Ah, oh, we're now almost a third of the way through the game already. <laughs> Okay, so I'm supposed to have a code here, huh? Where did I get ch oh from the pool alley? I used the oldest trick in the book. This is an old trick, all right. To Marcos's office, fingerprints. Sergio, the guy from the pool hall, would never have guessed just how useful his little gift turned out to be. Did he just flip me off? Okay. I guess I just have to try all the combinations. Okay, it's probably just whatever keys you happen to push. <laughs> Careful now. It's not in the bag yet. <laughs> Dramatic music! <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. This is this is amazing. Take it and put it back. Tony told me everything's electronically controlled. What? Don't make me turn the music off again. Stop it, Max. You're gonna wake him up. Don't move his hand, I tell you. Oh, I 
bet I know what I have to do. I bet I... Oh, uh, no. I thought for a second I had to put his finger in uh, the cup. Supposedly, if you put someone's digits into a cup of water while they're asleep, it'll make them need to go to the bathroom. I, that's probably just a myth, but at first I thought that's what it wanted me to do. Nope, that's what I'm doing! <laughs> I was right! Oh, that's phenomenal. Yep. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we did it. We did what? Whatever we did, we did it again. Marcos's office is on the left at the end of the corridor. I'm fairly certain I could direct these scenes better. <laughs> Don't waste your time with the door, Max. This feels like an episode of Silk Stockings or something. Hello. Oh, yes. I remember now. Marcos used to hide a copy of his office key here. Oh, Max, you're so clumsy. Well, but I got the key. I guess. Daddy. I'm guessing I have to pick that up. Got to cover our tracks. There we go. Man, they keep changing the angle on me here. instantly became very dark. Can't see a thing. Oh, okay, it gave me a it's memory. It's an IOU. LaGrange owes Marcos a lot of money. March 13th, 1996. I, the undersigned, Paul LaGrange, hereby acknowledge owing Antonio Marcos the sum of $200,000 to be paid back before April 19th, 1996 at midnight without further notice. LaGrange. quite a debt. That was stupid. 
guess I just have to look at the memory. It's an IOU. LaGrange owes Marcos a lot of money. Okay, so LaGrange owns Marcos. That's why I looked at it. I wanted to be certain of who owes, owns, or owes who. This is where Marcos kept his most confidential papers. Okay, let's open it. Something needs to be connected here, but what? I bet I know. Or not. Hey, attention to detail. I'll take it. They didn't have to show that. Uh, look in the closet. Don't hide in it. That could be a good hiding place if need be. The lock's open. There's definitely not much else in here. What do I need to do? I can leave. Ooh, maybe I can lock the door. Good idea, Kronos. Marcos mentions LaGrange on this brochure. Does that mean the politician is into guns? Mention this to Paul LaGrange for his collection. Marlowe, weapons and munitions, new collection, limited offer. document with Marcos's letterhead on it. Seems kind of fishy. I'll hang on to that. Oh, and I got the magnet. I bet that's what I have to use on the safe. No? Well, let's take a look at it anyway. Antonio Marcos. And it's empty. Oh man, the classic dot matrix printer style. Look at that. <laughs> I bet a lot of people watching this may be too young to remember, but that was classic. That's the way printers used to be, folks. Okay. Not sure I'm missing anything else here. I guess I'll save again just to be careful. The opening system is behind here. Something needs to be connected here. But what? The opening system is behind here. I feel like I'm right on this. I think I have to use this diary for it, but I don't know how. I really feel like I have that right. What am I doing wrong here? Aha, I didn't see that. Interesting. What? I guess it's just random ink. Oh wait. Use it on the paper. No, don't look at it. No. I'm just trying everything at this point. <laughs> what do I do here? I can't find 
anything else here to look at. An electric cord. It's my lucky day. Darn it, I didn't know I had to look at it again. Alright, so this is obviously what I connect to here. And now I can connect the diary to that. But what's the code? I don't know. God, I have no clue. Dee Dee said he'd crack the diary's secret code. It's your room number, sweetheart. So come on now, rack your brains. Oh. Fabulous! Didn't work. Got any ideas? If you ask me, the password would be something like the number of the room. Something Marcus would remember easily. I just did that. Damn, it's not that. Give me a hand. Marcus was a sentimental guy, you know. It wouldn't surprise me if the password was related to his love life. No, it's wrong. Any suggestions? What if the code had something to do with me? He was pretty crazy about me, you know. I'm probably just spelling it wrong. Yep. It was our lucky night. There was a whole file on an organization called the Elite sitting in Marcos' safe. Uh oh. I could already picture the kind of stuff Why did he wake up? involved in. Trading favors, political wheeling and dealing and all that. Oh. I was looking forward to a good evening going through the files back at the hotel. In the meantime, though, we had to get back out without being seen. Max, listen. It's the security guard. He's coming. Quick, hide. 